Hey guys, PK here. I uh, just want to talk about today about how not to start your property investment journey. So how not to do it. When I first thought about um, property investment, uh, first thought about um, investing in property, the first thing I did was to figure out where they were building apartments. <laughs> um, so I live in Brisbane. So they were building a lot of apartments in, um, in a place called Chermside, where there's a Westfield shopping center. So I spent about two months on the phone with real estate agents trying to figure out um, which apartment I should buy. That's a really bad idea in, the, in, in hindsight. Um, apartments, on average, on average, um, don't perform as well as new houses, as well as houses, but also certainly not new apartments. They tend to underperform. So that was a mistake. When I learned that, I very quickly pivoted, um, pivoted over to new houses. So I was ringing builders and I was Googling builders or trying to figure out where I could find a house which had a rental, a guaranteed rental um, yield. So when builders build, um, what they do is, you know, for a display home, they say, okay, we'll give you a guaranteed rental of X for this many years time. Um, just to entice people and I thought that was a great investment because that was limiting my downside and and you know it'd, it'd be guaranteed rent you know <laughs> couldn't be better than that not knowing that most of these builders or all of them they build in that rent as part of the purchase price in the first place so um, that was kind of where I spent the first six months of my property investment journey just thinking about how to get in and automatically for some reason, and I, I know this is the case with so many investors as well, um, we all think for some reason by default that a good investment property is a new investment property, something that's an apartment or house that's new, maybe with some of these shiny things like rental guarantees or things like that. Um, that was certainly my um, where I started and it was really, really a uh, bad idea and uh, in hindsight I'm I sort of thank myself for not pulling the trigger um, because those sorts of properties underperform over the long term and also the short term in, in many instances. Um, last thing I just want to say on, on, this, uh, on this live is there's so many people, in fact, there are probably hundreds of thousands of investors in Australia that, like me, when I first started, only thought about their backyard, only thought about, for me, it was investing in Brisbane, uh, wherever you live. It's very unlikely that the best suburb from a cash flow and or capital growth perspective is within a five kilometer radius of where you live. So just because you are most familiar with your surrounding areas, because you've driven by them, you know the people, you know the shopping centers, you know the schools, it's very, very, very unlikely that that is the best place for you to invest. Okay, I can't stress this enough. It's not about risk. It's not about risk. You know, sometimes people say, ah, oh, look, it's just too risky to invest somewhere that I don't know. In fact, it's riskier to invest where you do know if you don't actually know it. Does that make sense? If you think you know it, but you don't actually know it through the lens of property investment, then it's riskier to invest in your backyard than it is halfway across Australia. Okay, and to invest halfway across Australia, if that indeed is where you should be investing, doesn't require that much risk appetite, okay? There are multiple steps that you can adopt, multiple mechanisms, mechanisms that you can um, you know, flow through or, or embark upon that limit the risk. You can do all of your due diligence with all the right people, you know, crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, buying a really solid investment property that will make you a lot of money without any of the risk that comes from, oh, look, I've, I've never seen it or I've never driven past it. I'm not saying buy it sight unseen, but equally what I'm not saying is that you need to spend $20,000, $15,000 on a buyer's agent to buy in Adelaide or to buy in Tasmania or to buy in Sydney or Melbourne or wherever it may be for you. Buyers agents are great, but I just want to leave you with this fact that you don't need to use a buyers agent to buy interstate. 
Nothing against buyer's agents, by the way. I know plenty of you will be buyer's agents that are watching. They are fantastic. I'm not a buyer's agent, but they are fantastic. But you do not need them to buy interstate. So I just want to leave you with that so that you can, if you're in this position, expand your horizon, look out from beyond your backyard and don't make the mistakes I did, which was spending six months thinking about a brand new unit or house with rental guarantees in my backyard. Okay, thanks guys. Catch you later.